Okay. Okay, so let us begin uh, with explaining uh, kind of the structure here. So there are two key components uh, that are going to be presented today, basically. Uh, we're going to have this uh, dynamic CRM side component, uh, and we're going to have uh, this uh, document and the document preparation or the PDF preparation that is going to be uh, sent for signing. Um, I'm not going to go uh, in details uh, a lot when it comes to our uh, solution in general, uh, because uh, more of that will be explained in the solution manual. Uh, but rather, I'm going to be focusing on uh, what we can do and what we can achieve uh, on a real uh, use case uh, scenario, uh, where I've taken up uh, this XCM 101 document. Um, let me first open up this document and show what I've prepared in advance. Uh, for this to work. Um, so what we have here is the odometer disclosure statement um, that is um, that has information about three things. Um, it has the information about vehicles, uh, it has information uh, about the buyer and the seller. So this document basically um, is a situation in which we have a vehicle transfer or vehicle ownership transfer from one person to another. So this is a, a regular PDF document that just has uh, form fields on it, and it has a signature fields that you cannot see here uh, for the buyer and one for the seller. Uh, when it comes to the creation of the PDF, uh, you can, and you've probably seen that, uh, you, can, you can do that by using the designer uh, that uh, you can find here on, on the Numerial portal itself. Uh, but this is going to work even if you create these form fields uh, using any other PDF uh, creation tool. Um, so uh, what is important to keep reference to is the names, uh, which basically signify the ID and, and uh, represent the unique identifier for each field. Um, you, just, just keep in mind that uh, we need this ID uh, in order to create the mapping on the dynamic CRM side. Okay, so once we've done that, uh, let me explain the structure that and the setup that I've made on the NAMP CRM to make this uh, case possible. So what we're expecting to have here uh, is oh, we're going to send this PDF for signing, but uh, instead of having users type in all this data, uh, we're going to have this pre-filled uh, by the data that's coming from the dynamic CRM. So uh, here on the dynamic CRM side, uh, we have uh, four entities. Uh, we have the vehicle entity, uh, we have the transfer entity, that would be the seller. We have the transferee, the, the buyer. And we have the, the, this odometer disclosure uh, entity that's going to wrap up uh, the entire thing. So that, that's like a, a wrapper object for all, all of these. Okay, so um, I've created already uh, records on the dynamic CRM side, not to lose uh, too much of our time. So we have this uh, adding, so he would be uh, that, that's me, that, that would be the seller uh, in this case. Uh, also, we have the transferee, uh, that's again one record on the dynamic CRM side of the transferee um, entity. And that would be uh, NSAR, and uh, we have here different information for, for both of them. And also we need, uh, for this work, we need a vehicle, and already I've created one. Uh, we'll see that uh, the information for vehicle is already there. Uh, so th the name is Mercedes. Uh, it has th these uh, different information that we're going to need uh, for the vehicle to be pre-filled. Okay, so once we've set up our vehicle transferee and transfer, uh, we can then uh, go ahead and see uh, the odometer disclosure itself, which has a relationship uh, with all of these uh, before mentioned. So it has the uh, link or the relationship with uh, transfer, transferee, uh, the vehicle, and then has uh, all, all these fields uh, that are not really that important right now. But I just want to show, show in this example that we can have data uh, coming back to CRM. So users can type in stuff and then that data can, can be mapped back to the dynamic CRM entity records. Okay, so that, that's, th those two steps are crucial, but let's now take a look and how we configure uh, this data mapping. So on our solution on the overview page, what we have here uh, is the data map itself. And here is where we configure uh, all this thing that will come together when we send the document for signing. 
So uh, all the entities are loading up here. I'm going to select the odometer disclosure and this will load uh, basically everything that I prepared beforehand. So here we have, we can select uh, between CRM to Namirio or Namirio to CRM type of mapping and uh, it's, it's self-explanatory. So this one uh, configures the data that's going to be coming into the PDF itself or into the agreement. Um, and here we, we just specify four things. We specify the dynamic CRM attribute, uh, the field name, if you recall at the beginning, I, I said we should keep the reference to this one. Uh, we just specify which uh, type it is and then uh, which document number it is uh, on, on the list of documents that we're attaching when we're sending the document for signing. So that, that's the first part. And then we have for the second part, also we have this data that will be coming back and those are all check boxes basically uh, that users can check and uh, they either map the true or false on dynamic CRM. So we're gonna need a Boolean or a true or false uh, dynamic uh, CRM attribute. Okay, so once I've done that and I've saved the data, I've named this odometer mapping record, we can, we're, we're basically ready to send out our first uh, agreement. Okay, so I've opened up the test odometer disclosure record and here from the more commands, we have an option to send uh, for signature. And this record right here becomes uh, the parent record, let's call it like that, for this uh, agreement itself. Okay, so uh, we've loaded up uh, our odometer mapping record that we've created. Uh, from this uh, page itself, we can again access the, the document type mapping if we have not created that before, um, and then just edit uh, here. I'm not going to do that because I've set up everything in advance. What I'm going to do here is add uh, the two recipients that correspond to the bio, buyer and the seller. Uh, one thing I just need to type in here uh, is the name of the signature field uh, that's going to be assigned uh, to each recipient. And now let me just attach this XCM 101 PDF that I've created before and just change this one. Again, I'm not going to be focusing on these uh, all the options that uh, agreement can have, uh, but rather to show uh, the functionality here. Uh, we're good to go when the send button appears. Uh, means that uh, all the data has uh, been entered correctly. We have at least one signer, uh, we have the documents, so on. And now, uh, there's one thing that I'm going to be showing in a couple of minutes here. Uh, we can have this checked, uh, but let me come back to that later. So let's now hit send. And wait a couple of seconds until uh, the agreement is successfully sent. And then it will be saved on the dynamic CRM side uh, on the agreement entity, it will be saved uh, in the state of uh, in progress. And yeah, that's right. And we have this uh, date and time when, when the agreement has been sent. You see here, there's a missing uh, completed date that's going to be shown uh, when the agreement is in the status of completed. You see now the status of all, all the recipients is in progress um, and, and we have nothing else basically. So now, now we have a couple of options that are uh, provided here. And uh, the idea for this dynamic CRM integration with the eSign Anywhere is uh, to have basically uh, all the features that you would have normally if you were using this standalone uh, solution from the portal itself. Uh, but what we have here as an advantage, we have the dynamic CRM storage, uh, which helps us to keep track of all the data that's uh, all the agreements that are sent and then updated and we can have uh you'll see that later on we'll have the reference to the completed documents log files uh we'll have the date so it's it's a complete integration basically so here uh, like i said a couple of options we can have send, send reminders uh to all the recipients in case uh, not all of them have signed we can cancel we can delete the agreement so on uh, there's there's this uh, useful option when you have the client that you need to sign uh, the document when you have the client right there so you can post uh, that current signer. Um, I'm going to be using this option uh, for two reasons. First, I want to show that it works. And second, uh, I have one recipient here and, and uh, that's my colleague Ansar uh, that will receive this um, agreement by via email, but I'm not able to open his, his so I'm going to be using this post option. Okay, so um, click on the host 
option and now the agreement. So, so this basically corresponds to you clicking on open document on your email when you receive the agreement itself. Okay, so this is the document and we see that uh, all the data has been successfully loaded. So this is the seller's name right here. Uh, this is the mileage of the vehicle. We have here vehicle information that's been pulled out from the CRM entity. Um, we have the information about the buyer here and, and none of these are checked because if you recall uh, here, all of these were no. So if they were yes, they would map actually to uh, being checked. Okay, let me go back here. Uh, we have the, the signature field here. Uh, the other one for the buyer is hidden because uh, that's how we assign those signature fields. So let me just uh, assign this one here and finish uh, this one. And then uh, it will be a turn for the second recipient to do his part of the job here. Uh, we go back to the agreement to post once again. Uh, but this time I'm just going to be checking some of those checkboxes uh, to, to show that uh, we can have that two-way uh, data data mapping and, and have uh, data transferred back to CRM. Okay, I'm going to check these three. I'm going to sign here. Sorry. I'm imitating basic signature here and I'm going to say finish and that's it. Uh, place this agreement in total in the complete phase uh, so that we can update uh, this from the Dynamics CRM. Uh, we provide two ways to update an agreement. So there is this manual update where you would click uh, here, uh, but there is another way that uh, probably is going to be used far more, and that would be uh, automatic update, uh, where you would have this workflow on Dynamics CRM that would uh, be triggered every half an hour uh, and try to update every single agreement that's uh, in the status of in progress. Uh, so that would be, uh, I, I believe, preferred option if we have a lot of these. Uh, for now, I'm going to be using the uh, update uh, feature. Uh, this one checks uh, on, on the server itself. It checks uh, whether the status of agreement is uh, anything else uh, but in progress. And it is right here. It's in, in uh, status of completed. So I can just uh, hit yes and then uh, it will update uh, this agreement. And then uh, we're going to see here, uh, we have the completed uh, time uh, and date. Uh, we have a couple of additional information that happened, uh, which is uh, changing the status of uh, each recipient. Uh, and then uh, one last thing, uh, which is quite important, is just we keep reference to each document that uh, is related to this agreement on the Dynamics CRM side. Um, and, and dynamic CRM storage. So we download the completed document and we download uh, the audit trail uh, or the log file. I'm just going to be opening one of these so you can see uh, that these documents really did download and store on the dynamic CRM storage. Uh, so that's something that uh, we've seen uh, in, in our last meeting. Okay, so uh, one last thing, I'm just going to reload this odometer disclosure record and we're going to see that uh, all of those fields that were no before are now mapping to yes, which means that uh, this basically is a two-way data mapping where we had data coming in, and we had data coming out from the agreement and mapping to the NAMP CRM. There is more to this solution, uh, of course, uh, but like I said, we're going to focus on this two-directional data mapping and show that it, it is possible to have this complete integration with Dynamics CRM.